again and welcome to Ants Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are, May. Yay! We are. Tammy's blonde hair looks very beautiful. Oh, what's up with that? My hair looks bananas, but I'm having it cut tomorrow, so that's um, all good. <laughs> yeah. It, I was listening to, I don't know why, we don't usually watch WMR weather. We're back to the weather. Always start with the weather. Um, <laughs> but it, for some reason, it was on the TV this morning, and they were talking about it, and they're like, well, it should it should reach 60. Ever. And I'm like, reach 60 for it's only April. It's May. Okay, well, barely May. <laughs> barely. But it's just a point like, come on, can we have some I know. 70 degree days? Well, that and also I always tell myself because I hate April. I can't lie because it's always dreary yep. and kind of, I really am. I, it's the African in me. I'm heavily influenced by whether the sun is shining yep. or not has a lot to do with yeah. Carla's mood. Yeah. And, um, and April is always dreary, so I'm like, April showers, bring May flowers, I, yeah. but now I'm like, I have two tulips, yeah. yes. <laughs> and also I'm like, can we stop with the showers and start yeah. with the flowers? That's what please. I mean, we had a little more sunshine. This weekend was nice, but I'm like, you look at the weather forecast, oh. and you're like, come on. So Tammy and I and Dan and Louie and the dogs went on a hike on Sunday yeah. at Bear Brook, right? No, Briar, 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 Briar I feel like there was a bear in there no, anyway. No, it was Briar. But it, was it was definitely Briar Brook in, I guess it was in right? Goffstown. So Goffstown and I was told, I mean, I, I don't mind. I was, it was fine, but it was like, it was oh, a it's a longer. one and a half mile it loop. No and I'm like, okay, okay that should miles. take about an hour. I think even that little we're map, doing... remember when we changed colors? I think that first little loop might have been one so, and a half So mile. it was a two and a half hour hike. I don't fine. know. Did you guys check yourself? Because we were covered in ticks. Oh, no. I didn't yeah, and the dog. And Dan was saying, um, he was surprised because I had light colored pants. Oh, so, uh, of course, it is tick season, so remember... Uh, okay, Dan, if you're watching. The, the, the non-conspiratorial theory is that there is Lyme disease. No one knows where it came from. I have some ideas, <laughs> but, you know, we'll leave it at that. Uh, so do be aware and check yourself yeah. for ticks because you don't want to get no, I mean, I didn't, Lyme disease. I didn't check for ticks because I didn't... But I don't... Usually, I... I mean, I Spot showered on. immediately afterwards, but then when Louie went later, he was like, oh, I found two on me, too. Oh, so, And I did pull some off the dog. So I didn't see. anyway, uh, but it was fun and it was, it was beautiful it was and it was so pretty. And the moss is just really mossy <laughs> right now. So it's all good. We're in spring. We're yes. heading into the summer. Uh, if the entire world doesn't go bananas... Uh, which apparently it is because I don't know if you saw, but there's this leak yeah. that came out uh, from the Supreme Court claiming that there was an opinion that was written in February saying that uh, the Supreme Court has written a decision overturning Roe versus Wade. So, uh, and maybe I'm dumb, <laughs> but don't they have to? I mean, the Supreme Court doesn't just randomly write decisions. Right. They only make they issue a, a decision based no, on no, a case. No, no. There's something. Correct? So, so this is uh -huh. one. It's definitely psyops. Two. I actually tweeted today. I was like, "Hey, Legacy News. Yeah. If you guys actually want us to trust you, there's a job you can yeah. do now. Go find the leaker. Right. Do your job. So, if they don't find the leaker, yeah. we know it's psyops. It's probably you know. Uh, so, so this is clearly been introduced into the the dialogue and yeah. the conversation uh because it is a push issue yeah and it's a uh it's a way to distract people from inflation uh high high food prices high gas prices high energy prices well do you think it's uh, a i the, mean is it literally just a you know is it a distraction in the sense that the the democrats know that midterm elections are going to hurt them amazingly right because i mean even Mag i saw in the paper today or read something maggie hassan's now um pushing for a federal gas tax holiday and she's and it was saying she had something like 13 million dollars set aside for tv ads going into the election cycle and i thought so, so that's basically she's buying she, well votes. and she's distant quid pro she's, quo remember that she seems to be going um like I'm pushing back on Joe Biden, which from for those of us inside politics, you're like, okay, so you're distancing yourself from the nightmare that is the Biden administration or attempting to distance yourself from them so that you have a chance of maintaining your seat. So it's right. just interesting. So uh, for folks back home, if you've been at the gas pump oh recently, God. obviously Thank God I don't have a diesel vehicle anymore. It's cr I mean, the diesel, I think, is it over It was like over $6. $6. Yeah. But even, I mean, I think the gas between, let's say, 
Saturday and today, I mean, I, you know, every time I drive now, you look and you're like, oh, it's like 410. This place is 420. This place is 418. And then, you know, and then two hours later, you're coming back and you're like, oh, oh and now it's 430. I saw yeah. 431 in Gosstown yesterday. But anyway, there was, uh, I, I forget if it was an actual, like, Republican thing or if it's just grassroots. Right? But people are putting up the, the Biden yeah, I, stickers on the gas tanks with this like I did that and it's like I did that but over the weekend I found a new one so people will scrape those off the new one is a photo of Hunter Biden with the crack pipe in his mouth the very epic photo that was suppressed by the legacy news before the previous election because they didn't want to show the dirty dealings that are taking place in the Ukraine the little country that somehow everyone is now fussed about all right so the new one with Hunter Biden with the crack pipe. And it just says, uh, gas prices higher than I am. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. And I was like, okay, that's cute. That's yep, smart. Yep. You know, so it's, it's worth a mention. Um, but yeah, so back to the Supreme Court thing. Um, it's very suspicious, it right? It is. It's, it's... And, and my position, you know, and I have to say, I've, I've, I haven't actually evolved over my personal position on abortion. I was just never, ever vocal about it. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm pro-life, but everyone needs to make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. I personally would not make it illegal. Um, I think your body, your choice. I do believe that. I believe in self-ownership of the corpus. Um, so I would just be like, oh, I would never do that, but I wouldn't really take a position, right? But I do feel, and I did tweet out this morning, I was like, I would like someone to explain to me, though, why we went from a discussion where people said it should be safe, legal, and rare, right, to where I personally, because I follow our top politicians' accounts, have to see the word abortion every day. Yes. I have to see it maybe four or five times a day, depending on which accounts I'm following. It's all fundraising. Yes. So it's an issue that Democrats are using to exploit people in a way that I think we really do need to talk about mm. because it's... It, it's it's the kind of issue that feels very woman's libby. Yep. It feels very you know like yep. like you should you should be pro choice. It's there in the words, right? Like you've got to allow people to make their own choices. Mm -hmm. I do believe that. Uh even if they're the wrong choices, I just don't want to be responsible for your bad for, decisions. Well, and I definitely don't want to pay. Oh, yeah, I mean that goes I mean that, that should just be a no-brainer, right? Right. There's a lot of things I don't want to pay for. So, I so don't want to pay 33 billion dollars to Send to Ukraine either. Here's here's what I guy. think is going to be very interesting is because uh, we're we're changing how the censorship takes place mm. on Twitter. Mm. I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, you know, I've never really jumped into this issue, but I'm like, you know what? I think there's going to be some trolling where the question becomes, why, why? I mean, you are talking about. Killing your own because offspring. Because there is a massive You're amount of money offspring, involved. your offspring, whether you want to call it killing or murdering or uh, annihilation or whatever the euphemism is. Right. You, you, I, uh, I think that's a word. Whatever the word is you want to use for it, the point is it's kind of gross. Like, yep. is this what we want to attach well, our national I, I, right. well, debate and is, to? Right. And I mean, the, the reality is, is that the... Um, and Margaret Sanger, who started abortions in this country, was a eugenicist. And go look it up. Because if you posted that on Twitter for the past two you years, they took it down. But you know what? Go do your own research. Done. So there. So there. <laughs> okay, so back to Manchester. Yes. All right, back um, to so New So I was Hampshire reading news. this morning, which I was glad to see because it's been a nightmare for, you know, as long as I've lived in Manchester. Um the property on Blaine Street and Cleveland Street, which we just talked about a couple weeks ago, that is just loaded with debris and homeless people and empty vehicles again. Where is that? Uh, Blaine and Cleveland, which run between Second Street and South Main. Oh, it's Maine. down there near where Chris is. Okay, yep. yeah. yeah. Okay, I know exactly which property. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's been a nightmare again. It's been a nightmare forever. Um, little short history is... They it, clean it, and then two years well, the later, it's filled with boats the again. The city <laughs> actually paid to... We paid to clean it once, and then they let it get back that way again. Um, the prior owner who was obviously a hoarder, you know, he used to, he liked to think of himself as a recycler or something. Okay, whatever. Um, he died like in 2019 and, 
The city didn't take, I mean, this, I forget what the amount was. It was, um, gosh, like it was like $300 oh. in back taxes. I thought I print, oh, here it is. Um, we got, there was $269,500 in back taxes due. Um, but the city didn't want to ever take the property on a tax lien because they were afraid there'd be cleanup costs. Which <laughs> So like you let it get so bad that you were afraid that if you took it because this guy's like, oh, come on, where's the, where? I feel like sometimes the city just doesn't really know how to do anything. So anyways, thankfully some guy bought it. Um, he's from uh, Lawrence Massey's owner of a uh, insurance agency. He's got a hundred units in Massachusetts and New Hampshire, former chairman of the Lawrence Redevelopment Authority. I guess those are all good things for somebody buying a blighted property and looking to put residents in it. Um, oh, so they're going to build on it? He's he's got. A, he said he won't be able to really figure out exactly what he's going to do until after he does the cleanup. Um, but I guess there has been more than one um, environmental services um, impact thing that there is no on-site soil and groundwater. You know, there is no contamination, so he should be able to do something relatively. You know, what I say quickly, the government's involved. So you know, in the next couple of years, right? But um, it also sounds like when the government, or at least the city, gets involved, you can't really go by what they say. Well, that's Who well. That, that, other guy? that made me think of that. I couldn't find the article quickly, but um, just in I think Sunday's paper, there was an article about a, a developer who bought a property, and I. I could be wrong on the address. I think it was on High Street. And he's, it was, it's a commercial property, so it was offices and whatnot. But because of, you know, the downturn and need for office space, he's converting it into... Micro units. Micro units. So literally, <laughs> think... Literally, they're building your pods while telling you it's affordable right. housing. But Welcome they, um, to communism. They... He's looking to get, you know, obviously there's a, there's a math factor in there, you know, it costs this much and you got to be able to rent it because even if it's affordable and it was somebody, some people were quite surprised, but this is how much things cost. He was saying um, he's looking to rent to Section 8 because he's looking to get people who are stuck in the shelters into some sort of housing, which is a good thing on this guy's part. Good on him. Um the top section eight, or people who are trapped waiting, like living in a shelter because they're on the section eight. Oh no, eight list. I understand. I, I was mean, don't get me wrong; it's still going to come out of my money. But well, I'm like, no, I was laughing because when they shut down that tiny home village, the previous person yeah. in Peterborough who was like, "Oh, I'm going to help the homeless and I'm going to yeah, help the," you know, and then these people step in to do the job. Yeah. The government is not doing while well, taking your money to claim so, that they're doing it, and then they screw these what, people over too. I mean, you know, it, it is his. His responsibility to do his own due diligence and everything, but apparently he was led to believe he would be eligible for some city grants and um, some tax relief, like what they're doing with the property behind Murphy's. That property, um, because they're improving a, a there's no, requirements. it's because it's people's friends and but, they but, get special entitlements and benefits that the is, rest of us don't. This get. guy's property is just outside of that district, you know. So like, okay, but how did the city not? know that when they told him he would be probably eligible for these tax so the guy's gonna have to yeah i think it was like each rental unit would have to be 160 dollars more per month because he's doing he included electric wi-fi like it's all inclusive and he was pricing it on the section 8 pricing which if which i recall which was like 1300 and something yeah so uh so that and now, now he can't meet that but then they but were honestly you know what I think put some skin in the game. Make the people who are renting it, even if they have Section 8, make them pay the difference. The more you're invested in something, right, right. then you're actually learning skills you right. need. If you need personal responsibility in order to function like a non-loser in life, then yep. start to so, pay your way. It'll be interesting just after reading that. To I'm see, so glad to I see, did yoga before I came to in. To see <laughs> how much the city gets in the way of the guy who, looking to clean up and develop uh, Plain Street. That'll be fun to watch. Yeah, uh, it's just, it's you know, it's, it's, it's frustrating. You know, people try and do the right thing, and then you just run into these walls. What do you think that's creating? Is that creating an incentive for no. more people to want to do the right thing? It's kind of like, you know, we, so, we, we do all the trash pickup everywhere, yep. and I'm like... It almost feels like people put out more trash. Yeah, it's like, somebody like else oh, is someone's it taking care of this. I mean, well, and then I, so then also in um, this was also Sunday's paper. So in Paul Feely's <sighs> column, the whole thing about in town Manchester. So for those who haven't been watching our show for the last six months, um, 
The city ended the contract um, with in town Manchester last year before the election. So it was it was in late October. It was, I believe, in October because there were some financial issues. Um, they did not they struggled a lot. You know, in fairness, and um, they were like COVID, ninety thousand dollars in the hole. Right. But they, so. they it, there was a lot, there was a lot of messy city government stuff involved because they like we want an audit, and then they can't afford an audit, and then they do this. You know, like they, the city could, could have been doing a better job too. But regardless, they, um, they ended the contract with in town Manchester. Now, say October, so that's November, December, January, February, March, April. We're talking at least six months ago. In Sunday's paper, they're talking about how the city is now um, soliciting um, requests for uh, proposals to get the planters planted. Um, hello, you need to do that like two weeks from now. And um, yeah, I think I, I mean I, I I'm I, not feeling a whole lot of warm. I'm not feeling a whole lot of confidence. One of the I, our, I think that you know I, I'll talk to We Heart West and the organization on the west side. Maybe we say we'll take the the west side for this. Well, and, this you the, know. We, the, the um. They don't do anything. No, the city's never done anything. In town, Manchester didn't do anything on the west side. Nobody does anything on the west side except for some except for us, right? Except for that, when some little group cleans up that one corner near CMC. Yeah, once actually, a year. we've been going to I those know. as well. So. Uh, but it was <laughs> someone kind of, else is taking credit for you know, the when, trash that the free staters when a uh, um, city employee. Now this is the parks. Parks Department, Recreation and Enterprise Manager. So this is somebody getting paid more than, you know, $40,000 a year, right? Because she's a manager. She says, um, you know, at one point she said um, they she had been talking to businesses, see what they want. But it was funny because somewhere it said, um, gosh, where is it? Because it cracked me up. That, like, basically she went back to the planning department to see what the schedule is for planting the flowers and this and that and the other thing. And I thought, you're manager of the recreation and enterprise, and you had to actually go back and review a plan to figure out when plants need to get planted. I, the city just boggles me. So who knows what they're doing downtown, if they're cleaning downtown. You know, people, I've heard from business owners that they're not happy with what, what isn't getting done. Um, they, the city has now hired the two employees that used to work for in town Manchester, which I thought was interesting. So we've increased our employee base. Um, yeah, the city and I don't know. So the taco tour, speaking of downtown, um, we haven't had, they make it sound like taco tour went away because of in town Manchester. I always like this implied. There's always this implied thing. They've resurrected it. No, the reason that they had to be resurrected is because the city would not give anybody permission to do it during COVID. So it's not like, it's not like somebody dropped the ball two years ago. It's because the city wouldn't allow it. Um, but they're doing taco t the taco tour this Thursday, which is Cinco de Mayo in downtown Manchester. Um, it's now being run by the Chamber of Commerce in collaboration with the city's economic development department. So they're doing that. Um, Let's see. Da, da, da. I will warn folks if you haven't attended it before. It's a lot I of was shocked at, the at uh, how many people yes. come. The the highways Thousands. are actually backed up. Like you're trying to get well, off a highway into downtown Manchester, it's backed up, and it's a lot of people. It is so a lot maybe of people. Come early, you know. Well, park and a little you'll far know that the, you'll come be, walking. You'll, that city hall is going to close early and let everybody go home because you know people. Yeah, I mean, well, it's a Manessa, lot of so don't fun. go to get your car registered or pay your taxes or get your dog license or apply for a building permit or anything during the normal business hours until five o'clock this coming Thursday because City Hall can't deal with the fact that there's people downtown. Sorry, I don't agree. <laughs> um, what time are they closing? Three thirty. Okay, that's probably well, just because they also want to do the talk. Well, that, I, you know, maybe everybody <laughs> should just go home early on Thursday because it's Cinco de Mayo and everybody wants to have a margarita someplace. Um, <laughs> Interesting that the website I printed the page doesn't tell you what time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it starts it, like I around know, five. But I just laugh that I printed out this page figuring it's th what happens is the participants, you buy is the it tacos. Five dollars? Three dollars. Uh, three dollar tacos. Three dollar tacos. And there are, there's like, I want to say there's the like 60 different places. And all the different restaurants, uh, you know, have theirs and they have different kinds. So and then you can be like, oh, this one's something. really delicious. And you get to talk to everyone downtown and people start to be like, oh, uh, go if down you this like one. this kind of picante, well, you should so go I, here. I did and... see a post yesterday, a little, it was a little panic on somebody's part and it wasn't a restaurant obviously but there was somebody a store or a business of some sort who was also planning on participating but the health department came and told them they needed this special container with a spout because they had to have 
a hand washing station and it had to be water that kept at 100 degrees. And I thought, ha, come on, can we not just put out, I mean, uh, yeah. can we just use plastic gloves and not, and then when you need to wash your hand, I don't know, figure it out. I just think it's unfortunate. And to buy can, one of them was like- Can we even more simply just say, so we are told by the government, the reason we have all these things is to protect you from diseases, right? Like that's why they say we have health departments is to um, either, uh, it's basically so that you don't get sick when you go to right. a restaurant. Now let's remove the government from this equation for a hot sec. So if you're a restaurant, surely you have an incentive to not poison your customers. I don't know, it seems like you want to give people good food and that they're gonna come back and serve them. Maybe a hundred years ago, there was some point because maybe you know things weren't as clean right, and clinical and, maybe, and right. whatever, but given where we are in society today, in the modern world of 2020, yep. maybe, 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 maybe we could just start to let go of some of this well, stuff. I mean, come on. If you get food poisoning from a place, you can, you have a cause of action. You yeah. can go and you can be like, I ate your rotten taco and now I'm gonna sue you because yeah. you poisoned me and you're not supposed to poison your customers. We don't actually need any of this nonsense. The hoods on restaurants in, I think it's specific to Manchester, but it might oh. be statewide. The, the fire hood or the extraction hood that they expect you to put in at a restaurant costs over a hundred thousand yep. dollars. And it's basically like, you're allowed to get these brands. I'm like, whose friend owns that brand that is the recommended brand? We need to start a government oversight accountability organization, some kind of watchdog that is actually following because we get mad about when the government spends money. But I'm like, the part we're missing as people who need to hold government accountable is once the government gets the money and they're doing their contracts, who's getting those contracts? Right. I'm going to start paying a little more attention to that by way of example. I don't know if this is a good or a bad thing, but if you have a senator who is, say, fighting, actively fighting school choice, mm. and her husband is in a school that is, uh, or I'm sorry, her husband is a lawyer who's representing a school against the taxpayers. Isn't that a conflict of interest? That's a small example. Yep. There are hundreds of these. I am gonna go find that commuter rail money <laughs> that you guys are all like, cause I'm like, whose buddy is getting that deal? Um, on a, a positive note, one of my favorite things Puppies! is coming up. You can't really see it, but puppy. Um, Manchester Animal Shelter, 15th annual plant sale. If you are a gardener or your starter gardener, or whatever it is, this is probably the best place to get your it? Um, perennials. It is on Saturday, June 4th, so one month from now. Okay. And Sunday, June 5th, from 9 a.m. in the morning till, till 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I will tell you, a lot of people go. Yes, um, go early. I they went late. They had a, last year. I want to say they had a system. I think it was last year with numbers. I couldn't. I could I be wrong. One year. I think it closed for one of the well, COVID years. Well, the first COVID year, I think they didn't have it. And oh then my they, God! Speaking of COVID years, the, <laughs> in my memories, the uh, the rallies and all the health yeah. freedom stuff I attended over the years came up for COVID and there's literally a lady with a poster. It's a photo from behind and the back of her poster said, uh, two weeks, two months, question mark, two years, uh, yeah. question mark. And this was two years yeah. ago yesterday that that sign was. And I was like, lady, it if was you, two years. Um, but this is this happens at the animal shelter, which is located at 490 Dunbarton Road. So between off of Front Street. What's um, that? You can get, I mean, it's not, they, they have all sorts of perennials and they're all dug out of people's yards here in New Hampshire, so. They do really well. They, Every right. single plant I've gotten from a plant sale is thriving in my garden. Yep. Anything I got from Lowe's. Yeah, I, always, I, I have much better luck with my plant sale stuff and it's much, much Cheaper. less expensive. Yeah. Um, they usually have um, some herbs and they usually have some annuals. And then there's usually a guy selling like bird houses or things. I bought a little wooden box last year. It's it's a good way and it supports the animal shelter, which is a good thing because um, there's way too many animals that need homes, always, 
always. Um, so it's a twofer. You get to feel good about helping the animals and get good plants for your yard. And I know um, I'll try to dig up some information about the Bedford plant sale because Bedford Garden does Ooh, one. And there's a good one in Amherst, I think, I too. never liked the one in Amherst, but I, I will get the one. I will try to find one. It's I, really I think it was in Amherst because there was a really nice bakery that we stopped at on the way back. That's like an award-winning bakery. Blackberry black, or yeah, black something, something. something with black in the name, yeah. and it was uh, nommy nommy. So uh, <laughs> do some, some plant yeah, foraging. So and I'll then... keep reminding you every week about the plant sales because we should all try to make our yards look prettier. It makes you feel good when you're out yeah, there. Yeah, and honestly, if you're, you know, if you're back home, you're watching this, uh, why not take a step outside next time you're outside and just take a look at the front of your house or yeah, your, could. and pick up the trash yep. there. Yep. And also on the west side, uh, the Catholic Church, Notre Dame, a lot of those properties, they look dismal. There's a lot of trash. Can we like get the yep. word out and, you know, let, let people know not yep. good enough. Yep. Let's 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 keep our neighborhoods yep. clean. Yep. That's all we got. Take care guys. We'll see you next week. Peace out. Bye.